Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the all new 2025 Ram 1500. This is the limited crew cab four wheel drive. It's finished off in diamond black. MSRP is just over $86,000. Now this Ram is powered by the three liter Hurricane straight six twin turbocharged engine. This is the high output. It is paired to an eight speed automatic and it pumps out 540 horsepower, 521 pound feet of torque sent to the rear wheels however this does have the four wheel drive system it weighs in around 5900 pounds it'll do 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds top speed is 105 miles an hour it also has a fuel capacity of 33 gallons you'll expect to see around 18 miles per gallon in the city 25 out on the highway this also has a wheelbase of 153 and a half inches its overall length is 241.3 it has a width of 81.3 a height of 77.6 and with its adaptive suspension its maximum ground clearance is 11.8 inches now as we work our way to the exterior styling you will notice that there's a lot of chrome for this limited trim level and then up front we have a lot more it's on the ram logo which is front and center there's also a forward facing camera to give you that added visibility more chrome trim throughout this as well as plenty of cutouts there's also some gloss black accents as well and that chrome also works its way to the headlight housing so you'll see it's in the upper section there where this has a set of leds for everything headlights high beams drls and turn signals there's also a little bit of chrome underneath that and then the entire front bumper is chrome where there's also fog lights all the parking sensors there's also the sensor in the middle for the distance pacing as well and then a tow hook on both sides there's also really nice lines that run down the hood and on the side you'll notice 1500 SST HO which is that high output engine there are a few different engine options that you can get for the Ram and then as we work our way to the side pretty basic setup for these wheels but they have a nice design to them to match all the chrome there's chrome for that entire lower strip along with the Ram logo and then this does have a set of power folding side mirrors there's the turn signal as well as a camera no sunroof for this Ram which is interesting to see all the window trim is chrome though to match the rest of the theme there and then we have a pretty big full-size truck we have a long bed here too so that way you can place in a lot of items this has a towing capacity right around 9900 pounds as well with different engine options that's up to around 11,000 pounds just depending on which engine you go with but in back this has a set of led tail lights there's also the backup camera along with two handles there to open up the tailgate. There's chrome in the lower bumper as well as all the parking sensors. And then this does have remote start. So on the key fob, let's just lock it. We can double tap this button. And it will start up, not all that loud, but you can double tap that to shut it off as needed. There's also a button for the tailgate as well as being able to lower the suspension. So if you need to get in and out a little bit easier, you can put it down in the entry exit mode and that will give you a little bit better clearance to get in. Now let's open up this tailgate in the traditional way where it will just fold down like that. This model has the Tanu cover on it at the moment, but there's plenty of space some tie down hooks cargo lights so you can put in a lot of items as needed now if you have an item in the back and you simply just can't reach it like that leaf that's right there i can't get to it i don't feel like crawling into the vehicle all i have to do is pull on this tab i can swing that side open and then from here just like in an access cab for a pickup truck you can grab that handle and then open up that door now we have all that out of our way and i can easily reach in and even reach in farther if I need to get some items. So it's a really neat configuration. If you're using this as a work truck, it's a lot more convenient. You can also use the bumper step then as a step to get in with the tailgate out of the way. So you don't even need to have a tailgate step because you can just use the bumper when you open up those doors. There's also a step underneath, so it is hidden. You can just use your foot to pull this out and then you do have that step. So you could use this or you could use the bumper step if needed. And then you can quickly just push that back in. Now, as we work our way to the interior, you don't have the proximity door handles in back. So you do have to grab the front one in order to unlock the rear, unless that's a setting I don't have currently set up. This model is paired with the red leather interior, which looks really, really, really nice. This has the Harman Kardon audio. There's also the wood trim, chrome accents, 
Really nice stitching as well, the brushed accents for the release handle, and then plenty of storage in the door there. Now for these back seats, there's white piping, same designs that you'll notice. You can also flip up the bottom of these seats to where now you have a lot more storage. There's also this divider here, so you could place some items in the back there if you didn't want them to roll around. And on both sides, you can also lift up the floor where you have these bins. So you can place some items on both sides if you need to lift that other seat up and you can get a lot more storage in the back of this vehicle. Now with them down at five foot 10, we have that power step along with a grab handle to easily enter and exit where I have a lot of space. There's storage pockets, cup holders up top. There's also a little bit of storage there. You get heated and ventilated rear seats as well as all of these auxiliaries and then the uh, climate vents there. And then at my height, I have three or four inches above my head. You can also take this a step further. Simply pull that lever underneath, pull that seat forwards, and now I can just recline and relax in the back. So you don't even have to have the mega cab in order to recline these seats. Really easy to do that. It just gives you another comfort to the back seats here. Now there's also a tab over here. So if we pull this entire middle seat down, there's cup holders, the armrest, and a little bit of storage underneath that, which is nice. You also have the electronic sliding rear glass. There's speakers up top and just a, a lot of space. What you'd expect for the size of this truck. Now up front, there's the memory seating adjustments. This also gets massaging seats too. There's all of your window controls, lock and unlock, more storage in that lower section, and then the same design to the power operating front seats. You get grab handles in all four corners, so that's easy to do. And now we can take a look at the solid leather steering wheel, where let's start this up. So on this left side, there's Bluetooth and voice commands. There's also different driving modes. So you have snow, there's a tow mode. You can go into sport, off-road, there's also auto, and then back to snow there. So you can go through those depending on what you need. And then you can also further go through this information using these arrows. So this is very similar to a lot of the Dodge products where we can scroll down, look at all this information. You have trip information, navigation, so you can pull that up in the entire screen when you have that on and running there. You have your trailer tow, so you can go into that, go through a few different modes there. You have your audio, any messages, you can even get into the head up display. So you can set that up, you can set up your screen too. So you have a lot of information that you can go through to configure as needed and what you would like to see, which is nice. And then we can also go back to miles per hour here, and then we have the driver information. There's also vehicle information, so you can go through all of these vitals and monitor those as needed, including the ride height, which is nice. And then back to trip information. Now over on the right side, there's your cruise with your distance pacing, the gear limit, and then this is also equipped with volume and tuning on the back side of the steering wheel. Now on this left side, there's the headlight and fog light adjustments, even a pedal adjustment, so you can bring those closer to you or farther away. There's the e-brake, some dimmer switches, there's one air vent, we have some leather on the dash, a little bit of storage with an auxiliary up top along with the Ram logo, and then take a look at this massive infotainment system. On the upper section, we have shortcuts to your temperature as well as your heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel for the driver, same controls for your seats on the passenger side there. And then right in the middle, we have a large view with all these shortcuts in the lower section. So if we go to home, here's the split screen, then we can go back into media. You can go into all of your climate adjustments, pull up the navigation. There's also phone. You can go into vehicle too. So you have your mirror dimmer, you have your passenger screen, which you can turn on and off. We'll get to that here soon. Your power side steps and then the cameras. You can also get into all of these apps. Now there's also physical controls for your climates. So you have fan speed and temperature, recirc AC temperature for your passenger there. There's also the lane keeping assist. You have volume and tuning for your audio. And then in the lower section of the screen, there's some trailering information. So you have trailer steering, which you can turn on. You have your gain here for your limits. There's also the trailer braking system, and then you have a dial to help with steering and backing up. There's also your parking sensors, and then your ride height for the vehicle. So you can currently see we are pretty much in the middle. We have three settings to go down and then two to go up for more clearance. 
Now over here, we have your four wheel drive selectors. So you can go between all of those. There's also the engine start stop. There is a rear axle lock. So you can engage that as needed for the differential. If we twist this dial once, that is for the camera system. So we can pull the backup camera with the top down view. You can go to full screen. You have your forward facing cameras and then even one in the back there. You can go to some more here for your vehicle. So you have another top down view. You can get into a few of these here just depending on what you would like to see. And let's see if there's a few more that are different here. You have your driver curb, so you can look at your side view mirrors there for additional camera views. And then obviously there's drive and then park going all the way back to the left there. Now there's also a lot of auxiliaries down below along with an HDMI cable. So you can hook that up for that passenger screen. There's two wireless charging areas and a lot of storage in this entire middle section. This is actually movable. So if we push it all the way back, we have plenty of storage in front. There's limited on the center armrest here where you have a little bit of storage with an auxiliary and then you can open this up to reveal more storage. So if you wanna slide this all the way forwards and eliminate some storage up front, now you can have your traditional center armrest and console area where there's also this area to flip up. So that way you don't slide this backwards if you have items in the back, you won't crush them. So you can put that down as needed, which has a pretty cool design on it with all of those rams there. And then you also have a little bit of storage behind that. You can also close the cup holders too. And you have some graphics with some diagrams here on the backside. So pretty versatile, just depending on where you wanna have that storage. And then as we work our way to the passenger side now, you can't actually view this screen from the driver's side. So it's pretty much head on from the passenger where hopefully you can see on the screen here, there's audio, video, HDMI. We can also go into some notifications as well. And then there's controls for your screen off, your power. There's the brightness, which I do have all the way up, a little bit hard to see. And there's manage headphones. So you can hook up your headphones and go from there. So it's not a whole lot of information, but you do get your navigation devices and camera too. So you can actually click on a camera to view the backup camera if you need a little bit more visibility or maybe you just want a second opinion from your passenger, you can go into that. But I think it is cool that you can go into the navigation and type this out a little bit different than going into the center there or just go through this information as needed. And then you can turn this on and off as needed too. You also get the glove box, so plenty of storage down below, limited badge there. And then up top, there's a sunglass holder. There's also the control for the sliding rear glass, dome lights on both sides. You can even deploy the tailgate. And this is also equipped with the camera system and the rear view mirror. So you can flip that up as needed. And then as far as visibility goes, it's pretty easy to see all around. We have some small pillars. Pickup trucks really don't have any blind spots, so you can clearly see over both shoulders. As we set off now behind the wheel for the Ram 1500, over the last four or five days of driving this around, this has been a really cool truck. It's been a big truck as well, but it's also been something that's incredibly comfortable to drive. I haven't had any issues with how it's driving, especially with the full adaptive suspension. It gives this truck more of a luxury feel especially having that suspension. And what I've noticed too, is that there's a lot of automatic adjustments with the suspension. When you get up to around 65 miles an hour, it will actually lower the vehicle for better aerodynamics. And when you're towing, it even raises the suspension. I don't know if it does it in the front, but it definitely does it in the rear, just to give it that auto leveling. So that way you're not going down the road, you know, like that, depending on what you have on the back of it. So all that has been very nice. And then with the massaging seats, it just gives you a nice comfortable place to drive and be behind the wheel every day. So it's it's been nice. The only downside has been parking. I've just had to monitor that. It's a pretty wide truck too. So it's nice that we have the power folding side mirrors. I've been using that quite a lot just to keep them in, in the parking spaces I've been in. But if you're looking for a full size truck, we have a lot of great amenities in this Ram, including reclining the back seats. That is something that I really haven't seen much or been around. It's probably been in some other vehicles and other pickup trucks in recent years, but first time that I've seen it in person, and that's really, really nice. Just to, again, make your backseat passengers that much more comfortable so you can have full-size adults in the back and you really don't have any issues. The one gripe that I know a lot of people will comment about is no sunroof, no panoramic roof 
for $85,000. That could be an option that this one just doesn't have. And I thought it was definitely weird to not see it. I don't use sunroofs that often, so I am okay with this. Uh, but for the price, I think a lot of people would like to see that feature. And with the high output engine, pedal to the floor. And minor delay there, but with the weight of this truck, we got up to speed. Very smooth in its power delivery as well. So pretty impressive for a truck like this. But here's what it's like to be behind the wheel for the 25 Ram. Definitely a lot of, handling's good too, definitely a lot of technology at your fingertips with this pickup truck. We have so much to go through to make this that much more suitable for daily driving. I haven't really used a lot of it just because it's not a vehicle that I own, but you know, trying to get used to everything. Uh, there's definitely quite a lot to go through, which is nice if you're looking for a lot of tech features like that. And as far as handling goes, while we have some turns here, I really like how the suspension can absorb and handle around turns. Uh, just another added factor to driving this every day, and you can stiffen it up a little bit when you put it into sport mode. When you do that as well, it also puts it into four-wheel drive automatic. So that way, I guess if you punch it, maybe you're, you don't have quite as much grip on the back wheels, uh, it's going to help with the, the front traction there so you're not slipping. What's also interesting too is that when you put it in the tow and haul mode, it goes into four auto as well. So that way when you're towing, if you're taking a boat out of a ramp or something like that, it's a little slick, uh, you're already in the correct setting in order to go through situations like that. I'm also very impressed with the mileage. So I've been driving this for four or five days now and I still have three quarters of a tank with 346 miles left on the range. When I got it, it was just over 500 on a full tank. So driving every single day with the commuting that I've done, I still have a day and a half to go with this and I'm probably not going to get to half a tank. So it seems to be pretty fuel efficient for a vehicle like this and what you're going to be doing with it. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the 2025 Ram 1500. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.